Well, Henry, how's life in the Leslie? Yeah, I'm enjoying it actually. It's um, it all feels quite still quite new. Um, you know, coming in kind of halfway through preseason uh, after the club giving me a kind of good break. Uh, felt like I settled in pretty quickly. You know, it's a great there's a great group here. You know, quite a young group, but a lot of familiar faces from from, from the Wales stuff over the years, and um, you know, a few other old faces knocking around, which is which is nice. And um, yeah, it's, it's been you know, it's been a lot of encouraging stuff at the start of the season. It's just moving forward from now, really. How was that last year or so for you in France? Uh, the last year or so, it was, it was mixed, really. Uh, I came back from the World Cup and went straight into Montpellier and there was a lot of um, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, Richard Cockrell got sacked quite quickly and then um, some French coaches came over and uh, it was it was clear they didn't really want didn't want a, a foreign foreign player in my position. And so I, I found an opportunity at, at Cast, which um, I absolutely loved. You know, I had a great six, seven months there um really really fit into the way they played and uh, and felt very valued and uh started playing some of the best rugby I played in, in in France I think um you know whilst whilst really enjoying it how did this move come about then well I think it came about kind of reasonably early and um you know I sit down with I had a, I had a kind of zoom call with 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 Peely when I was still in um when I was still in Montpellier and I, I wasn't really sure what to think of it uh, initially. You know, obviously, new Peely, I played with him for three or four years at Sale. You know, someone I've got a lot of, res- lot of respect for. Um, I'm not just saying that because I have to, because I'm a boss now. Uh, but genuinely, you know, as a t- you know, as a teammate, as someone you know, I've I've spoken to throughout the years since he left, um, and the kind of way he the way he sold me the club and what they were trying to do and and their vision. I really, I kind of came out of that meeting much more positive um, and excited about this place than, than than I probably thought. And then uh, there was still, obviously there was still a fair bit of uh, work to be done. There's a lot of things behind the scenes in, you know, Welsh rugby here and 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 in my career and stuff. And uh, the kind of deal finally got done towards the end of the season-ish. What have you made of the uh, on the field so far? The URC playing against the sides you have so far. What have what have you thought about it compared to French rugby and also the uh, the Premiership you played in before? Uh, I'd, I'd say the URC is probably more similar to the Premiership. Is um, the probably easiest comparison is is not very similar to the top fourteen. Um, top fourteen is probably so set piece based. Um, there's so much focus on that. There are a lot of there's a lot of massive blokes in every team. And, you know, you can have some real turgid games there. You can have some really exciting loose games, but there's it's always full of massive blokes running really hard. Where URC-wise, it's probably a lot more skill, a lot more kind of attacking shape, a defensive organisation. Um, and you've really got to kind of start breaking teams down with with, with good rugby rather than just kind of banging the door down with uh, with forwards and, and, and strike runners. So... I've, I've really enjoyed it. I think as a club, probably frustrated where we are after after uh, um, three games, where realistically it could have it could have looked very different. I think the well, obviously he wasn't here last year, but it looked like a lot of guys have, have grown up. There's been some good addition, good additions to the squad. Uh, you know, there's. It feels like an exciting squad to be around, to be honest with you. And I definitely feel like a elder statesman with a with a few other boys. Um, but the amount of kind of young young talent and guys who are a lot more mature than even their age, they've kind of got a year older um, and, a, and a year better. It, it feels quite an exciting squad to be part of. I suppose the next step now is actually um, converting that, you know, those... 20, 30, 40, 50 minute performances into 80 minutes performances and, um, and you know, just turning that corner and t- turning those kind of losses into wins. And that could happen with your first away Welsh derby. How are you looking forward to that on the weekend? Cardiff at the Ams Park? Yeah, I feel like we owe, we owe them one uh, massively, you know, being 
what being 15 nil up, whatever it was at home, uh, let, let them come back into that game. And then, you know, really, we should take at least something from that game. I think everyone was disappointed in, 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 in different areas. And so that we, we must be them one. And, and uh, I think boys are just excited to get out there. And there'll be a bit of a hectic crowd down there. Um, which is great. Excited. That's what I'm used to. How's your fitness, Henry? You've obviously come back in, missed the first game. Uh, how, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm, 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 I'm getting there. It's, uh, it's never easy having a kind of disrupted preseason. Um, just badly timed, small injuries which uh, kind of knocked me back. I picked up a bit of an ankle injury in the the warm up to the Saracens game. You know, just unlucky things. A bit more fell on me and. Um, you know, one of those things can just be unavoidable. Uh, luckily, it didn't take too much time. Um, probably just kind of building, building up that match fitness to hopefully kind of give give more and more to the team. Final one for me, Henry. When where does Wales' sort of international career fit in now with the rest of your career? You obviously had a great time in the World Cup. You picked up there. Um, where do, where do you see yourself within regards to that? Well, look, I. Would always love the opportunity to play for Wales, you know, whenever whenever it comes. Uh, it's not something I'm I'm kind of counting on. It, it, I wouldn't say it was the reason why I came to the Scarlets. Um, for me, it was more about you know the the place and 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 the project here and and the people here. Um, but of course, you 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 know you always have, always have your eyes set on a on on something higher to play at that top level. Um, and I was pretty gutted to miss out. That um, South Africa game where I got a good injury in trainings before that game and um, end up missing out on the summer tour and you know post World Cup World Cup was brilliant it was an unbelievably hard summer um, boys put in so much work and you know we, we had a we had a we had a good campaign and probably kicking ourselves not to to win that quarter final uh, for me at that point I thought. You know, going back to French rugby, that was probably my my only chance, which was a bit, which was kind of you know a bit of a sad, a bit of a sad ending. But um, yeah, if we get a chance to go again, that's that's amazing. But you know, that's not too cliche. It really does start here with the Scarlets. It starts with staying fit and um, gats and humps. They can they can make their decisions. Lovely, thank you. Good luck on the weekend, mate. Thank you very much. Hi Henry, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You're right. Yeah, good, thanks. Um, obviously, um, you've already played um two games, uh, two competitive games. But what, what do you, what do you think you can you can bring to this Scarlets team that maybe they haven't had before or recently? I think <clears throat> definitely something. Something since I arrived, um, I've just been a bit of structure and a bit of um accountability around around scrum time i think uh you know ma making the players be you know be responsible for for what we're putting out there at training and, and the weekend and um probably creating like a a front row group which is which is kind of honest and and kind of improving i've put a lot of time in that with the with the squad and they've they've responded really well you know not just the front row guys the whole all the forwards are responding really well um, to the work we're doing, and and I think we're massively progressing. Um, obviously, uh, being led by 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 Ems as well. Um, then then around that, probably that experience, um, a bit a bit of leadership around that scrum stuff, but also around the park. Um, again, it's still it's still early days, but. Hopefully, bring help bring a bit of kind of that winning mentality and just just about kind of staying in those games, and um, then helping helping the team with that kind of forward game, which they've probably gone away from over the last couple of years. Yeah, obviously, as you said, you spent a good few years in France. Um, you know, we we all hear how tough the scrummaging is in France. Just just how. How tough is it then in the top 14 in terms of scrummaging in comparison to England or what you've experienced so far in the URC? Yeah, I think it's I think it's different. I think it's just the way that the teams um, rely on it and how kind of tribal 
tribal it is, how important it is when you, when you go away from home and, and when you're at home, how how teams can hang everything on the scrum. And so if you're not scrumming well enough, you're not you're not playing. And the crowd, the crowd love it. You know, sometimes uh probably in the UK, you know, crowds can get a bit frustrated at scrum time, but uh yeah, go to a top 14 game and you know they're all they're all baying for blood. Um which which I loved. And it's also it's just again, like I said, it's full of massive blokes. You know, there's yeah. two eights, there's two um packs of eight which are they've probably got one or two guys over 150 kilos uh, and that makes massive difference. And it, it's different, you know, sometimes it's not always it's not always harder, it's not always easier. It's it, it's but it's definitely heavier, it takes a lot more out of your legs and um, if you show a weakness uh, in the top fourteen at scrum time, then teams will come and exploit you. Yeah. So um, who, who's the toughest opponent you face in the scrum then? In the top fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I always find it, it probably varied over the, over the years. To lose, to lose when they've got their their full pack out and um, Lara Shell again. Two two massive, massive packs that uh got big weight. Um but it varies who's playing, who's playing different weeks. These guys have got big squads. <laughs> you you never you never go anywhere and think you're gonna have an easy time there. It's uh you know, everyone sees it as a back a backbone of their of their of their squad. And so they recruit pretty hard. Yeah. Um obviously the scrum is important in, in any competition, but Maybe the URC, there's, you know, it's a bit looser at times. Is that something you've had to adapt to as well? Um, when everything's so set, peace focus in France, and perhaps you need to do a bit more when when, when you've uh, come to the URC. Yeah, it, <clears throat> you're not probably not wrong. It's um, there's probably different type of fitness, I guess, and I'll probably try and catch up a little bit with that with a, with a few injuries at the start of the year. But I think whatever you play rugby, the the set piece is still massively important. You know, you you can still win and lose games on 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 the back of your set piece, and um, if you want to get a foothold in the game, going back to set piece is unbelievably important. And um, and so I still I still want to give that side of the things that you know that's what I'm one of my strengths, what I'm what I'm good at. So um, I want to bring that to this squad here, and then let the guys and do the exciting stuff, give them yeah. from football to, to go and do it basically. Yeah, and just just finally, just just on the Wales front, obviously, um, <clears throat> we don't know whether Thomas Francis is going to be available, but we're assuming he's not. There's not that much experience at tight dead, especially in the scrum, like we saw. Archie Griffin did a great job in Australia, but I think he'd only played like three games for Bath. So you've obviously got a lot of experience, especially in the scrum. Do you think that's something that could be in your favour and something you could add to Wales as well? Because you no, know, a test level. If you haven't got a scrum, then your chances of winning, you know, uh, isn't as high. Um, yeah, I, I think it's something definitely I can I can bring is is my experience and um, you know, it's an area of strength, something that uh, I spend a lot of time on. Um, you know, different areas in my game I can also uh, bring to Wales and. End of the day, it's it's who they want in the squad. That there's an element of of Wales building towards the future. Um, so we'll we'll see. We'll see. I guess it's it, you know it's, it's an area that will always be important in in, in rugby union um, at the scrum. And you know you can't get experience without playing. So I'm sure they'll want to give some good time to some of the younger guys, guys coming through. Guys like Archie who had, a, who, had, who had a great summer, but um, hopefully with their there or thereabouts if 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 they want me. Brilliant. Nice to talk to you, Henry, and uh, good luck in the weekend. Thank you very much.